What's up, fellow freaks? Welcome to another episode of the Freaks of the Vine extended broadcast of Fellow Freaks, where we interview people who have had a huge impact in the kingdom of God for his glory. And today is no exception with my good friend, Dave Cruz from the Covenant Metal Show. Um, I was going to say radio show again, Dave, and I almost failed you on that. I I keep wanting to say radio show, but it's okay. It's Covenant Metal Radio. Oh, excuse me. I, I, I got it right here. Oops, I got it. I got it. I got you. There you go, bud. <laughs> Covenant Metal Show. Covenant Metal Show. What is up, Dave, my brother? Dave Cruz. Hey, what's happening, dude? Yeah, uh, glad to be here, man. And uh and man, I I you know, I can't wait to see you again next summer, man. It's gonna be awesome. Absolutely. Dave and I met um at the uh, Mortal Fest part one of the second annual mortal fest in Versailles, Ohio. I make sure that we have to say Versailles because if you say Versailles, which is the way they say it in France, the people in Versailles correct you that we're oh, not get bad. Did you get corrected on that at all? No, no, no. I no, did. I heard about Twice. it. Twice. You did. Oh man. A station and a rest and the really nice restaurant there at the hotel. But it was a really, really fun experience. It's a beautiful town. I stayed in Greenville yeah. and drove over every day and total blast. And that's where we met. Yeah, yeah. I stayed in Greenville too. And, uh, you know, that BMI Event Center, that's the best uh, venue I think I've ever been to, man. And the best festival by far, just the overall atmosphere. And it's it's like a big family reunion. It really is. It, I, With loud music. With loud music. <laughs> I had no idea about the center, the event center. I did mm -hmm. not know what to expect. I had no expectations. I could not believe how cool it was set up, how welcoming it was to the fans and the bands, and everybody mm -hmm. got to hang out. I One experience I had, I got to tell you, man, um, guitar player from Baron Cross, uh, they got together. The Three of the four original members of Baron Cross were there for other reasons. And they yeah. got up and did two songs, which was really, really cool. Apparently, they imaginary were. music and deadlock. Very good, absolutely. Yeah. And um, Lee Lee Paris was a guitar player, yep. and uh, a very tall, unearth of a man. He's just huge. And we were standing outside um, downtown, and we had gone to the um, like a Bible study there. We were talking, and he goes, "Oh yeah, yeah." He goes, the you "Sanctuary know deal." Yeah, yeah. And he's like, "Hey, you want to you want to just walk with me so we can chat?" Because I was like, "Ray, I'm a I'm big fan of Baron Cross." He goes, "Yeah, walk with me." So we're walking, and he's thinking it's like two blocks away from the event center. It's like I don't know, ten or twelve blocks. It's not that big of a city, but it is a long walk. And we're in July. And it was hours after church, so we're like noon. I'm hungry, I'm fat, and I'm hot. <laughs> but I mean. <laughs> I made the excuse because I get to hang out with Ray Paris and we had the most blessed conversation for those 10, 12 blocks. And about halfway down, he goes, I'm sorry. I didn't know it was this far away. We were you parked over there. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, that's cool. I get my steps in. And, uh, but it was cool. That was the kind of, that was the kind of conversations you get to have with people there. You just, get oh, to, yeah. you know, it was just, they're on MTV, man. A California metal tape. In the late 80s, 88, 89, huge impact on this high schooler that was listening to Anthrax and, um, you know, Nuclear Assault and all these other metal bands. And when I became a believer, I was jonesing for good stuff. And I got to listen to that and they were on it. So I, I told them, I was like, dude, thanks for, you know, your impact. And it's just, you don't get to have those conversations. No, no. You know, especially like, say, with like a secular band, you know. Um, yeah. and the thing I like is I have yet to come across anybody in a Christian metal band that has an ego, um, you know, and these are, they're just, they're just normal people, man, you know, and it, it's just funny because at some of these festivals, I'll see people go up and they're all like fanboyed out and geeking out and everything. And I just kind of sit back and in my head, I'm just laughing. I'm like, what a dork, you know, but, <laughs> but at the yeah. same time, I, I get it. I get it. You know, yeah. it's like these, these guys are their heroes, you know? Sure. Sure. But, uh, 
I, I learned a long time ago, you know, when I started going to festivals and interviewing some of these guys and stuff, it's like, just treat them like regular people, man. Cause Absolutely. that's really deep down inside They're They're no different than anyone else. You know, it's like, take away the fame. They're just regular people. Absolutely. You know? Just like, the and that's how they want to be treated, you know? Yeah. Absolutely. And I've, I've been blessed to be able to, uh, to meet some big names in Christian metal and, uh, build friendships and relationships with these people. And, and it, it just, it still blows me away sometimes. Like I know so-and-so it's like, Oh my gosh. Wow. You know? And yeah, never would have thought, you know, yeah. well, I want to talk to you in a few minutes about some of the people you've met over the years and also about the immortal fest, uh, and the third one that's coming up in July. And then they split it in two. There's two actual different dates, um, in, in Ohio, we'll talk about that in a minute, but I want to jump in first and talk to you about your show. Um, please tell us about when you started covenant metal show what it does, what, what your purpose is and some of the things you've done over the years Floor is yours brother. Yeah. Uh, well, the covenant metal show, I started that in January of 2015. So next month will be nine years that I've been going at it. And, uh, prior to that, I had never done anything even remotely close to doing radio, anything like that. And, uh, when I started out, I didn't know how to do any of this. And, uh, I, you know, everything I was going to say, I, I had it all like scripted out and written out. Oh yeah. And it was funny. Cause the first few episodes is like, yeah, you can tell this guy's reading off of something, you know? And I, uh, I just wanted to, I wanted to come across as natural, but, uh, that took some time and, yeah. uh, you know, you got to get your feet wet and, and learn as you go. And so I'd say the first six episodes that I did, I went to a buddy of mine's house who was a musician and he had a studio in his house and uh we did the show there and uh he recorded everything popped the songs in for me and all that and uh then i would watch him editing so i just kind of picked things up watching him and after about six episodes uh we had some creative differences uh he wanted to use the show as a platform to promote his own personal music and it was like, okay, you know, I don't mind playing a song every once in a great while, but like every show you want to pop a couple of your songs in, it's like, dude, it's not about you. You know, this is about the Lord first and foremost. And that's another thing I wanted to be different from other, uh, radio shows that I had heard, especially, you know, Christian metal ones. Sure. Um, I didn't, I didn't hear energy in the DJ's voice it was like some of these guys were like monotone. They sounded like they were bored and it was like, well, I don't want to be like that. You know, I want to be entertaining on top and funny and humorous things like that while also playing the music and sharing scripture. That's a big thing I wanted to do. I wasn't seeing anybody else do that. And so I decided, you know what, I, I want this to be unique. So I shared scripture and at the end of every episode, man, from day one, at the end of every show, I do an altar call inviting people to accept Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. And uh, so that's been a staple in the show from day one. And uh, over time, I, I just, I don't know, I just learned. And I've, I've gotten all kinds of kudos and, and props from people and whatnot. And, uh, uh, you know, and it, it means a lot to me. I don't let it go to my head. You know, I've had uh, some people, Oh my gosh, you're Dave Cruz. And I'm like, I'm just a regular person. I'm nobody, you know, <laughs> I, I'm nobody, you know, I'm, I'm the same as you, man, you know, but, um, I do, I, I love what I do. Um, and music has just always been a, uh, huge part of my life. You know, I, be, I became a metal head at like age 15. First band I got into was Def Leppard and then, uh, just kind of graduated pyromania or hysteria. Uh, it was when Hysteria came out. Okay, we're gonna forgive you on that one because Pyro. Uh, well, hey, it's a good. It, it was yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. Okay. All right. All right. If that was the bait that got you, and we can't fault you on that, brother. <laughs> you're, I know people, you're 50 now, right? I am. I'm 50. Just turned 50 in September, That's and right. uh, so yeah. Birthday. Oh, thank you, bro. Thank you. I got a year and like two months on you, so it's all downhill uh, from here, Dave. We're just yeah, I know, right? <laughs> Your old metalheads, but no, that's I, I'm you're... reminded of it every time I walk from my studio back up into the house, and I go up the stairs, and you hear the cracking and the popping of your knees and your ankles. You know, that's the boards underneath you from the weight of the body. I don't know how to tell you that. 
I'm just kidding, Dave. I'm, that, I'm that's it. I'll uh, th- I'll go with that. I'll go with that. <laughs> you know, you said you, you know you when you started the show out in 2015, you wanted uh-huh. to be professional, but you know you don't become a professional unless you practice the profession. Exactly. And, and you have exactly. become uh, you you really do a great job with it. I love oh, your thank focus you. on the new bands that are up and coming. But yeah. you've interviewed some heavyweights. Tell us about a couple of the heavyweights you've you've hit on over the years. Uh, some of the first people. Well. <laughs> The uh, the first big interview that I had was the show hadn't even been around for a year. And somehow a buddy of mine set it up. Uh, it was a phone interview with Michael Sweet from Striper. And then I think like a month later, I had an interview with uh, Marcos Kirill, guitarist for POD. Um, had an interview with him. So, um, and then from there, you know, I've interviewed uh, Les Carlson. I've interviewed Ray Para a couple of times. Um, gosh, who else, man? <laughs> Lots of people this goes uh, on. Yeah. Oh yeah. The, the list just goes on and on. And, uh, uh, Rex Carroll, I've interviewed him. I've even hung out with him. And, and that's another thing is like, not only have I interviewed these guys, I've, I've had a chance to actually hang out with them yeah. and, and know what they're like off stage and away from the cameras and things like that, away from Facebook. And you get to see like the real side of them and they're the real deal, you know, Amen, each and every brother. one of them. Well, and I think, you know, that when we talk about Christian metal, um, a lot of times the secular world, they only hear one band. Uh, they'll for years. It was like, I, I'm, I listen to Christian metal and they go, Oh, you mean like striper and nothing wrong with that. If that's your identifier, absolutely. But yep. the genre, I want to say, and I want to bounce this off of you. 94 is when I started to do a radio program called K buzz late night call sign of the, of the station was KBUZ. And, um, so we just had a Saturday night radio program, two hours at first. We, we were kind of playing the college alternative stuff, which was cool because in 94, 95, um, Christian music, REX records was still out. There's a lot of really great music, you know, six pence down the richer, a lot of, I mean, Plank Eye was at their, you know, uh, Common Children had come out. A lot of good music. But we moved into more metal, played some some gangster rap just because some of it was really good. And we had, you know, some young brothers and sisters that were like, hey, is there anything that's better than what I'm listening to? And you remember, like, after the L.A. riots, there was a lot of really wicked um, hip-hop that had come out. Oh yeah. More and more violent. And so, you know, uh, people who liked rap or hip hop were like wanting something alternative. So we were throwing some stuff in there, but the metal really took off when a buddy of mine named Mike, um, joined our show. And he was like, you've got to start playing some of these, these, uh, new metal bands. And I think the Christian metal was ahead of its time with inventing like the new metal that was getting popular was actually had already been around for a little while in the Christian scene. And a lot of people don't know that. And right. you get, uh, you know, POD's first two albums, um, Brown especially, it was not like their breakout stuff. No. It's more punk. And it was cooler. You know, and you've spoken, came out in 2000, and they were really good, and a bunch of other groups were hitting. But you have had an experience over the years of being a metalhead. So what is, first of all, what is your favorite genre or two? I know you like a lot of different kinds, but what, what is your go-to when you're away from the microphone? My go-to, uh, man, well, my number one go-to I'd have to say is uh, thrash metal. Um, you know, and to this day, I, I, I still like Metallica and it's like, not, I don't pay too much attention really to the lyrics, even though I know the lyrics, I could sit there and sing all the songs, you know, from back in the day. And, uh, the lyrics just don't mean anything to me. It's just whatever, but it's, it's the music, the musicianship. And, uh, so, I mean, you know, I'll, I got no problem admitting. I still like Metallica. I still listen to them. Um, but, uh, you know, for, uh, for Christian, uh, metal, uh, I'd have to say my favorite band is Deliverance. Um, love those guys. And then, of course, you know, I like the 80s style stuff. I mean, I grew up in the 80s. So, you know, uh, that's 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 my go-to as well. You know, okay. like the hair bands type stuff. So, I mean, you, you know, you said Baron Cross. I love Baron Cross. And uh, they're the reason I went last year in 22 to Immortal Fest. 
and uh you know sacred warriors stuff like that white cross reign of glory which is a newer band but man they are phenomenal yeah but they tap into a lot of the older roots which is really cool yeah i, yeah. I think i think deliverance has got to be up there for really anybody who's known christian music metal music for a while they they set a precedence they set a trend and the thing about it is they're not, it's not a one hit wonder and they're not one genre jimmy brown no. is one of the most creative men i've ever listened to in my life i love his solo stuff um mm -hmm. it's different it's not deliverance but even deliverance with like river disturbance and camelot and smithereens and some of the other albums after their initial thrash metal era um you go back and listen to like ramming speed the song i uh, just mm -hmm. incredible the bat the album learn is one of my favorite christian just metal albums and it's nothing that's thrash there's nothing thrash about that album it's still hard and heavy but it's hard and heavy yeah. but they were able to adapt i still think river disturbance is one of the all-time greatest albums ever assembled they had a big budget he was able to do a lot of writing in the studio which most bands don't get that chance and right. uh breathing still i'm and uh anyway yeah anyway i can go on and on about it <laughs> but I finally got a chance to see him, see them as well with you. Um, mm -hmm. They were there and I got a chance to talk to him. We interviewed him, uh, fellow freaks about some period back, maybe a year and a half ago. He was kind of like our first one that we really did. So I was like a child in a candy store in that interview. Cause I'm like, I really like you and I'm happy. And <laughs> I didn't, I didn't do that in front of him. Thank you. God for <laughs> But if I would have, he would have really been like, yeah, okay, and end interview. Um, yeah, baby. <laughs> Rand. Anyway, uh, so uh, <laughs> Jimmy's a great brother in the Lord, and I know that you got oh, yeah. a chance to visit with him and Manny. They're just larger than life. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I love those guys. Okay, so talking about now – Going to the Immortal Fest, we want to really tell people about that because it's a great middle of America. Ohio is actually Midwest. Um, you're in Missouri. I'm in Kansas. So we're really, mid, you know, we're Midwesterners. Yes. Um, but Ohio is only 10 hours from my house, front door to their front door. About the same, about so 10 to 12 you, hours for me. Yeah, because yeah. you got to come from southern Missouri. I just get to go to the straight shot. Yeah. Um, we know that there's going to be a lot of new, a lot of great bands there. Um, you posted, like I think you were the first one to announce on your, on your Facebook page the lineups that were coming. Tell me what you know about it. Well, uh, I I saw the flyer and I was like, oh yes, and you know, and as they updated, I keep you know posting the flyers. But uh, the newest one, oh gosh, uh, Weapons of God is going to be there. I'm really good friends with them. They're they're local to uh, the Dayton, Ohio area. And uh, Reign of Glory, Deliverance, Theocracy, uh, Iron Wrath, which I'm really super excited to see those guys because it's not just a concert. They put on this whole like, like cinema uh, experience type thing. Oh, cool. And yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it, you're getting a show um white cross saint uh sacred warrior they're all coming back fear not uh bride is coming which i'm really excited for that i know a lot of people are i've been really would love to meet dale thompson and um I'm, another one that i'm really uh, excited for is uh, neon cross and uh shout uh which i'm really excited for that because uh i love ken tamplin I watch his uh, vocal academy videos sometimes. Yeah, he's all over YouTube. YouTube. Oh yeah, he's 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 amazing. He's really cool. And 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 it's not just that. I see his personality in the videos, and I'm like, man, he'd be a really cool guy to hang out with. You know, really really laid back. Yeah, I got turned on to his music um, when I started doing the radio program back in '94. He had come out with a couple of records at mm -hmm. that point. I had really never heard of him or his uh, original band, which has escaped me. But um, yeah, great vocalist, and and he now has a uh, does like vocal training for people who are wanting to sing. Uh, and then they post it on YouTube, and uh, thousands and thousands of views. Uh, Ken Tim, oh, yeah. Vocal Academy, uh, is very cool. Um, one of the bands that um, you hadn't mentioned yet, but I know that you're thinking about them because you had a chance to interview them, and we did the other day, and that is um, uh, Inner Siege, and they're a new band. Oh yeah, they've been out for a little while. And they're not new, but they're new to me, and they're new probably a little bit to you, maybe perhaps. And um, we interviewed uh, uh, Wade Helm the other day, and uh, yeah. they're going to be there. And 
Um, as pretty good. good. I'm, I'm, I've become pretty good friends with Wade. He's a really He's a great awesome guy. Dude. Oh yeah. Uh, we really enjoyed, um, uh, talking to him and but yeah, power metal. It's, uh, it's an interesting genre because, you know, the music is very symphonic. It's very emotional, very epic. And, uh, it, that, that's my second favorite, uh, music genre after uh thrash metal. And yep. then every once in a while, I'll go on this uh, classic rock kick. Okay, so but yeah, we're gonna be able to see Inner Siege, which are finally invited to to play. Yes, I'm excited great. for that. And there's a band uh, that I am so excited about, and that's Spoken. They're gonna be at the one in July, and I love their early stuff. I can't tell you that I followed a lot of their later, and I'm gonna listen to some of it. But early on, they brought a clean aggression that was really solid lyrically. Mm -hmm. And I, I really enjoyed that first album to me. I went back and listened to it like a week. That's what's crazy. I told Wade this the other day. I listened to that album all day, the day before when you had announced. And then we had just, Wade was like, yeah, I'll do the interview with you. Um, and then, and then you posted it that night that spoken who I'd listened to all day. I don't yeah. know. And then, inner siege agreed to do the interview and they're on that list. And I was like, Providence, man, Providence of God. Oh yeah, absolutely, man. And it's just, it, it just blows me away because, uh, uh, you know, earlier this year, I think, uh, somebody had heard from Dale Thompson or something like that, but it was going around Facebook that he was going to be this next year. He was going to be moving back to the States and uh because i think he's in new zealand i think that's where he's where he is hmm. something like that yeah or the netherlands something like that anyway one of the ones that starts with an n <laughs> okay. uh no finland i don't know but uh never yeah i heard that he was going to be moving back to the states and uh of course you know when everybody heard that they're like oh man gotta have bride come and play at immortal fest and i was like yeah i don't know if that would happen you know i mean be cool if it did and boom now they're coming so i'm like yes yeah. that's, that's there awesome was a, there was a dude uh was commenting on your on your post about i don't even want to get into it but kind of criticizing dale and you know i'd say oh, yeah, yeah yeah i yeah. regardless of where people are sometimes at with their political or you know social yeah. uh, social um uh, thought process Use, or whatever using stuff yeah yeah you know i gotta tell you man that guy uh, the album Snakes in the Playground, I remember becoming, uh, I'd sold all my Christ, all my non-Christian music, all my secular stuff. And the first time I heard uh, Snakes in the Playground, I have a video um, that I need, I'm going to put on the disc. And it's of my now 32-year-old son at the age of two. Um, oh, is Gage your son? No, no. Um, oh, okay. So Gage is my brother from another mother like <laughs> you. My son right does the Freaks of the Bind podcast with us as well. And, uh, but he was two and he was singing, he was lip syncing uh, Picture Perfect off the Snakes in the Playground album. Oh, and wow. I have him doing the, the lip syncing of the scream of Dale Thompson. And it's one of the funniest things ever. And I I'd kind of forgot about it. And then I just got one of those, you know, converters. So I was mm -hmm. start transferring it. I've got to show everybody it's, it's classic, but um, I, I introduced him to Christian mental very early. Nice. Very early. Yeah. He was coming out of the womb and the crib listening to metal. Um, what is some of your, when you talk to people about metal, there's still a lot of folks who have issues with it. I mean, at this point in time, I don't really care what anybody ever says. I think when we were trying to make an apologetic for Christianity, you know, there's a lot of people, I have an uncle that preached against Christian rock specifically for a period of time, um, believe it or not. But, um, he wasn't, he wouldn't talk to me because I'm such a metalhead of Christian music. But, um, when you talk about how, how, how it's a source of witness, what do you talk to people about? I've never had that problem. Honestly, I've never had anybody, you know, come to me and, Oh, how can you listen to rock music and, and be a Christian and, you know, and it's of the devil. And what, what's funny though, is I did have something like that, um, happen once 
And it was way back when I was a teenager, like way, way, way before I That's came. That's when I think a lot of us were having issues. Was back. Yeah. Then. Go ahead. And it was it was interesting because uh, uh, a couple miles from my house that I grew up in, there was this one church, and during the summertime, uh, I think it was like Friday or Saturday night, something like that. They had like an arcade there with you know video games, and you could go and play the video games for free. They had a concession stand in there. You could get like, you know, sodas, chips, whatever. And, uh, they let you play for like an hour or so. And then they would shut off all the video games, make all the kids come out to the basketball court and listen to, uh, the, the preacher preach. And it was always the same thing, how rock music was of the devil and they had these super strict rules. You could not show up there at this place with any kind of print on your shirt. And there was uh, one time there was a, I took a, uh, my girlfriend from school. I took her with me. She had this shirt on and all they had, it had Mickey mouse on it. And they threw a fit about that. And Mickey mouse is, is evil. And I'm just like, and I, I even told the preacher, I'm like, um, you do know that Mickey Mouse is a cartoon. He's not real, right? You know, I don't care. It's of the devil. Blah, blah, blah. And the and then, video games that they were plugging in for everybody to play wouldn't have been. I, it, I know, right? Yeah, it, it made no sense. But uh, there was one time I, I did kind of, you know, kind of in a sense called him out, but not like in a jerk way or anything like that. But so he was talking about how rock music was was of the devil. And I said, well, Cause at the time I only knew about Striper. So I said, well, what about Striper? I said, they're, they're a Christian rock band. They sing about Jesus. They sing about the Lord. They sing about God, you know? And he's like, Oh, I don't care. It's rock music. It's of the devil. And I'm sitting there thinking like this, this guy is nuts. You know, <laughs> there was so much of that early on. And I, yeah, I, it was crazy, I, but that's the only time I ever came across any, anything like that. You know, and I want to talk to Ray Paris you know, or, or some of the guys from the, some of the, that era and just ask them about some of their experiences because I know pastor Bob Beeman did. I mean, he had some, he had, a oh, yeah, there was of lots of going. people coming against it back in the eighties. Oh, yeah. absolutely. And I remember talking to Jimmy Brown about it back in the mid nineties. I think it was like 95. They were on tour to support river disturbance. And, um, he was like, is that still a thing in the Midwest? And I'm like, yeah, it is. Actually, uh, we had, we're in Topeka. We had uh, Rackets and Drapes come to town as part of their little tour. And they were kind of Marilyn Manson-y. And um, they were going to play at, uh, at this church. And we had pre-sold tickets. Um, and there was tons of people lined up to wa- listen to them. And because um, the other radio station that actually ironically fired me after a month um, because they didn't, they thought we were doing the work of the devil. Um, they had organized a protest with signs. Now, Topeka, Kansas is also known for the Westboro Baptist Church, which likes to picket everything, uh, still does. So yeah. there's these people picketing, and so they were always getting the attention of everybody driving by. And the church was like, We're not going to deal with this. So we ended up asking them, those guys, to go to uh, a coffee shop, and we packed it and they jammed, and it was a lot of fun. They stayed at my house and they were just ridiculed the whole time we were here and they were here. And I felt really bad about that because one of the members of the band was like, I don't understand why people hate us so much. We're really trying to just give an alternate to Marilyn Manson. And I'm like, right. I'm like, I'm sorry, man. You know, but that's yeah. the way that people are. And I think, unfortunately we're seen in that view by a lot of other people, as opposed to seeing that that's just a, those are just the Pharisees. Well, yeah. And it, and it comes down to, you know, uh, unfortunately there's people out there like that. Like if they see something that they don't like or something they don't understand, they immediately want to squash it. You know, it's like, yeah. like, like stepping on a spider, you see a spider, you don't like it. And, and you, you want to step on and squash it, you know? Yeah. Uh, good point. And it, but it's, it's, it's interesting too, because I've even pointed out to people, I'm like, look at the Psalms of David. You know, I mean, yeah. uh, sing unto him a new song, play skillfully with a loud noise. I mean, you yeah. know, I mean, you can't get no louder than, than rock music. Right. <laughs> so, right. I'd love to play for some of those people. I'd love to play that murderer by impending doom, but what did I know? Anyway. So, <laughs> all right. So going with covenant metal uh, show, what do you got uh, scheduled lined up for folks and how can they check you out? 
Uh, well, we got lots of interviews. Um, I just did one with a band called uh, Tricord recently. Uh, Friday night, I think it was, I did um, one with a band called Dying to Live. Um, I've got, this week, I've got Reborn. I've got a band called Saving Darkness. And I uh, got Saved by Grace coming up, Cannibalistic. I've interviewed those guys before. And uh, yeah, so um, the show was on every Friday night at uh, 7 p.m. Central on uh, the GER, the GRR Gospel Rock and Radio. And uh, you can, it's on Live 365. You can get to it from the app on your phone, which is it's a free app. Or you can uh, uh, go online if you want to listen on online. It's uh, live365.com, and you just go and type in, uh, uh, I think, either the GER or Gospel Rock and Radio, and the show is on there. And um, actually, I, I, I'm I, partnered with the guy that owns the station, so I help him run that online radio station. So that's pretty cool. Um, so there's that. And then sometimes I try to go live on Facebook on my, uh, my personal page and the Covenant Metal Show's Facebook page. So... You know, you can find us there and like and follow and all that. And uh, we're on YouTube and uh, you can subscribe to us there. Uh, really appreciate that. Just type in Covenant Metal Show. Boom. There you go. Okay. Everybody yeah. check out Covenant Metal Show uh, on the different sources. Gage will put those down in the description to get you to some of the uh, locations. Obviously, if you like that shirt, which I love that shirt, uh, you can also um, you have a website to uh, that, that does that for you. I, I, I used to have my own website for the Covenant Metal Show, but uh, uh, I ended up having to let it go a few years ago. And it was like, eh, you know what? I'll just, uh, I'll just stick with Facebook, you know, sure. promote on there and stuff. But uh, Anchor Merchandising, Anchor Like a Boat Anchor, Anchor Merchandising, all one word, dot com. And uh, not only do they got this cool shirts like this, uh, we've got hoodies, coffee mugs, all kinds of cool stuff. Um, a lot of band merch, a lot of deliverances on there. They got a lot of merch, shirts, t-shirts, uh, uh, hoodies, you know, uh, okay. coffee mugs, all kinds of stuff. White cross. I think they're on there. Uh, I know sacred warrior is reign of glory, all kinds of stuff. Even, even like, uh, old school, you know, bands that aren't even around anymore, like vengeance rising. There's some, their stuff is on there. Mortification, uh, so yeah, and uh, a lot of the underdog bands that I was talking about, you know, those guys got stuff on there. So uh, okay. yeah, anchormerchandising.com. Perfect, Dave. Thank you. Um, yeah. Well, that's awesome because we want to make sure that we promote you and, and support you in any way that we can. And we appreciate all you do to help promote these bands and obviously for all for the glory of the Lord. Um, I got four quick ones for you. You ready? Sure. <laughs> Final four here. Four quick questions. Now it's time for... Final four here today with Dave Cruz of Covenant Metal Show. Uh, Dave, I always uh, usually include a food question, but I'm going to start you off with something like this. Um, tell me, uh, tell all of us, please. What's your favorite book of the Bible? My favorite book in the Bible is First John. Very good. Yeah. Great answer. Yeah, absolutely. Um, what's your favorite sport, uh, professional sport? Uh, NHL hockey. Are you really? So who's your oh, team? Oh, yeah. Colorado Avalanche fan. Okay, so you're a Missouri. From the very Bell beginning. Falls. Very good. I'm a, I'm a Vancouver Canucks fan, and I, 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 I share our podcast uh, member, Zach, is a humongous New Jersey Devil fan. Right on. So, uh, yeah, but uh, well, good for you on the Avalanche, who just won there. You know, I interviewed, uh, pardon me. Monty Colvin from Galactic Cowboys, and he lives in Colorado now. He lives in Denver, and he was it was after their uh, NHL victory for their Stanley Cup, and he was very excited about that. So, which one they won three times? Yeah, no, I don't remember. They North didn't North win. North they North didn't North. win this year, unfortunately. It was the year before. Yeah. It was right after the year before because they just won it the week before we entered. Yeah, they they won in twenty two, and I was totally stoked. Yeah, really excited about that. Yeah, they, you know, it's it's pretty cool. Good job. Oh yeah. All right. Um uh I'm a chubby and I like food. So tell us if we're in Springfield, Missouri, what's the best place to eat any kind of food? Oh my gosh. 
Um, I love barbecue. Barbecue is a big thing here in Missouri. Um, and, uh, there's a, a little, little hole in the wall place, man, called Pitts barbecue P I T T S Pitts barbecue. There's them. And then there's another place called getting basted, like getting wasted, but getting basted. That's clever. Yeah, their logo. It's got this goofy looking pig on it. So this is real funny, but, uh, man, that they, they got the burnt ends, the tri tips. Oh my gosh, dude. I'm, I'm, I'm sitting here just thinking about it. I'm getting like salivating, dude. Seriously, it's the it's best barbecue for dinner tonight, right? Oh, dude? I know, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe some ribs or something, you know? Absolutely, absolutely. All right, if there's one metal Christian metal band that never got any exposure, that's been around for a while, that you would like to tell people to go check out, it's got to be a band that just never really got much notoriety. Who would you pick, and who would you suggest that we check out? Oh, that's easy. Uh, band that i'm really good friends with and uh they got two albums out on rocks records and uh, you could get those at rocksrecords.com the band is called weapons of god oh so we're going to be seeing them in yep. july they're going to be on that ticket absolutely i've seen okay. them a few times and uh the last time was in september they actually had me come up on stage and sing a song with them that was really cool oh yeah that's right i forgot about yeah. that that was your that was the band you came in too early i remember that yeah, well, yeah, yeah. It, the Sorry, the, Dave, not the to sound was just horrible up there, and I was. It trying is, to... Dave. The fact <laughs> you knew their lyrics and you sang great, so let's not let's not that be the overshadowing point of. Oh no! no. Here. <laughs> Good job, brother. It was a lot of fun. It was a lot of fun. So, is your wife going to uh, accompany you to the one in July, or are you going solo again? Uh, no, uh, she'll be with me. She was with me this year, actually, uh, both of them. Oh, that's right. Okay. Yeah. The only time I went solo was in 22. I was, I, I went with a buddy of mine. Okay. That's yeah. not solo. That's with a buddy of yours. Right. But I mean, you know, without my wife. Yeah. Yeah. I, I'm not taking mine with me. I'm she's, <laughs> she has zero interest in going. Let's just be honest uh, with you. And she's like, no, that's your thing. You go do it. She's so gracious. See, that's like, that, you, that's interesting because like my wife, she's really not in the metal. She likes a little bit of it. There's a few bands I've turned her on to, like Fear Not. She loves Fear Not. Who doesn't and, love them? Uh, They're great. Good call on that one. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And, she, and we, you know, she's met them. We've hung out with them and, and they love her. She loves them, you know. And, uh, uh, but I, I think primarily she, she goes because she's met a lot of people through me. We have mutual friends now because, you know, my friends have met her and now, they're her friends too, that kind of thing. And, uh, yeah, she, she just enjoys going. And, uh, it, it's interesting. Cause when I first started going to Christian festivals and I started doing my show and stuff, uh, she would get shy around meeting people and, and going to the festivals kind of wasn't her thing. She kind of, you know, she'd bring a book to read and I'm like, why are you reading a book? You know, just socialize with people. But it's, it, it took a while for her to come out of her shell, dude. And now it's like, she's this totally different person and just, it's awesome. It really is to see her come out of her shell and just socialize and right on. That's awesome for, for her. Good for her. Yeah. Hey, you know, and, uh, uh, did you get any sanctuary coffee from sanctuary international? I did it? not. I've, I've tried some before a buddy of mine. Uh, he had their headbangers brew. He came over to my house and tried some. It was pretty good stuff. Oh yeah. Yeah. I got, I got a couple of bags. I've been, uh, I've been chowing down on that just cause I know you're a coffee freak. Oh yeah. I love coffee. Dave can't, Dave can't wake up without making a fart joke or having a cup of coffee. Absolutely, man. That's what I live for. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a dude playing a dude disguised oh, as another dude. I hit the wrong thing. My bad. Play play the other one. That was good. That was from Tropic Thunder. That was. Uh... Let's see what else sound effects Dave's got for us. There we go. Okay, so you were saying uh, coffee and farts. Well, I don't have coffee in front of me, but there you go. Thank you, Dave. <laughs> Appreciate that. I'm glad you're in your studio. Buddy. Sound a little wet at the end, didn't it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hey man, uh, thanks for I'll, all the I'll, I'll check later. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> just just check later. Get a wipe anyway. Uh, hey, listen. On a serious note, thank you for joining us today, man. And uh, uh, best pleasure. of uh, best of blessings to you going forward with all the different groups you're doing. Hopefully, they appreciate that. 
that exposure and that run. Everybody check out Dave Cruz's um, Covenant Metal Show and uh, go to the links below and in the description and check out all the different things that Gage will put up in this episode. And um, and hopefully and prayerfully you find some bands you've never heard of and you like them. And, you know, they always really appreciate the support. So that's always that. And you can always go on to the Immortal Fest, the BMI Event Center website, and buy your tickets. They're cheaper to buy them in advance. And you can buy a two-day pass for, I think it's 80 bucks. You are not going to see that much music anywhere else for that much, for that little bit of a price over a two-day period. No doubt. Oh, yeah. It's t- I, I lost count. I don't even know how many bands, dude. Yeah, they've, they've been yeah. adding more and more. It's becoming bigger. And um, it's all inside. It's well done. It's interactive. You can hang out with the bands. And they do such a great job. And I'm going back. I'm going back for sure in July. And uh, I'm looking forward to it. So, brother, we're going to have to hang out again, okay? Absolutely, man. We definitely will hang out again, brother. All right. All right, right for on. Gage and myself, we uh, invite you to check out any of the other interviews we've done on Freaks of the Vine. Look under the, the special tag of fellow freaks. Otherwise, you can always listen to the Freaks of the Vine podcast, our roundtable discussions about different issues that affect us today and their Christian worldview response to those issues. Again, for um, for all of us at Freaks of the Vine and for Dave Cruz, thanks for joining us today. Lord bless you guys. And Dave, love you, man. We'll see you soon. Love you too, brother. God bless.